I want to take a few minutes and talk about business ownership. How businesses are owned, specifically identifying the three basic legal forms of a business. In fact, if you were to start a business on your own, one of the first issues you have to address is, you know, what is in fact the legal character of my business? The three basic uh, legal forms are a proprietorship, or a partnership, or a corporation. And in fact, you will have to make a conscious decision as to whether you're going to operate legally in one of those three forms, and we will discuss some of the derivatives of those forms a little bit later. Okay, let's begin here by focusing on a proprietorship. What is a proprietorship? A proprietorship is a business that's started by one owner. I mean, for example, if you wanted to uh, just kind of start your own little window washing here, business while you're at college, um, you could basically say, you don't even have to say, you just go out and make business cards and go out and start handing them out, and you are effectively by default operating as a proprietorship. It's just you, and you're the owner, and you're trying to operate the business. There is really no legal red tape in operating as a proprietorship, except uh, if you start to hire employees. And it is perfectly okay for a proprietor, owner of a business, my window washing business, to go out and hire some employees. When I do that, I am going to become subject to federal law in terms of hiring practices and payment payroll taxes and, and maybe even some, some uh, you know, safety issues and these kinds of things. I, I suppose there might be also a, a little bit of red tape in some uh, municipalities and cities. They, the city may require you to actually have a business license, but that's a simple thing. Just call up the city and say, hey, I'm starting a window washing business. Why need any kind of license? And, and if there is a requirement for that, they'll have you come down and sign a, fill out a simple form, maybe pay a, hopefully a small fee, and, and you're in operation. If, in fact, you are selling products, you may come under a state's sales tax and may need to, to, uh, to call the state tax commission or, or other collection agency and determine whether or not you're going to have to fill out forms and those forms. But really, getting into business as a proprietor is a fairly simple thing. One of the things that you should be aware of about a proprietorship is that if you operate a business as a proprietorship, there is no separation of the business from your personal legal liability. Now, let me explain what I mean. Let's assume you're out there and, you know, you're your first customer and, you know, you started the business, you've got, uh, you know, a ladder and a bucket and squeegee and you're out there and you're, you're washing a window and, and unfortunately you slip. And, and you're about ready to go down, but you, you kind of grab the window sill and the ladder kind of explodes almost right through the, the window and there's glass flying in your little cup and it's not too bad, but unfortunately you look in and there's this little, you know, there's this, this child that's, oh, thank goodness, she's not seriously hurt, but she's been frightened and, and maybe has a little cut or something, mom comes up there, she's screaming, she's gone bananas. How could you possibly have done this to a little girl? How traumatized? And she's totally upset. And what do we do in America when we're upset? <laughs> you're right, we sue. And let's assume that she sues us as we were incompetent or negligent or whatever and created damage, might be permanent relative to her child. In this particular case, you know, she files a lawsuit and we find ourselves in court and, and maybe in fact, if in fact we were maybe a little negligent or something like that, uh, if she's successful in this lawsuit, then uh, you know, there might be a legitimate claim against the business. And in fact, if there are some damages and we're required to pay damages, I might, you know, they have a claim or right to attach any of my assets, uh, the business or resources. They can take my ladder, my squeegee, my bucket, and all these things. Well, you know, they cost much anyway, go ahead. But in a proprietorship, there is no separation of the, of the business resources and your own personal resources relative to legal liability. And so not only could they take your squeegee and your, and your ladder, but they could also come in and say, hey, you got to pay these damages and if you can't pay with your business resources, that's tough luck. I want your boat, your house, your car, your kids. Of course, maybe they're really not worth that, but I don't know. It depends on you know, your relationship there, so whether that's something that you, know, you have to sell or not. But just kidding. I know, I'm just kidding. So don't get too upset about that. But anyway, so, you know, there's a, that's serious. I mean, that's a true risk. I mean, why would anybody ever want to start a business like that as a proprietorship and expose you know, their personal livelihood in the future to that kind of a potential liability? Of course, this can be addressed through liability insurance. And anybody operating as a proprietor should get some liability insurance to make sure that they are protected in the event of some kind of a, something like this. Of course, I suppose even if you don't have any personal assets, let's assume you have a squeegee and the ladder and, and the like, but, but you, know, you don't have a home and boat, you're not married, these kinds of things, maybe then you say to yourself, well, I don't really have anything to lose, so who really cares in that particular case? But generally speaking, you'd be well advised to get some liability insurance if, in fact, you're going to be operating as a proprietor. The second, the last thing that I'd like to know here that is so distinctive is that proprietorships not only operate as a single entity in terms of the owner of the business in terms of legal liability, but that's also true in terms of income taxation. In other words, if you make any profit in that business or loss, it will be reflected directly on your personal income tax return. And the business is not taxed separately. All the income or loss of the business are taken to you directly as the owner, as income, or as a deduction in the event of a loss. The second form of a uh, basic legal form of a business ownership is referred to as a partnership. Now, this is basically the same as a proprietorship, except there's just more than one owner. Hey, it's, it's me uh, again starting a window washing business or you, and, and we're going to do it together now. Nah, maybe we do it together just because hey, we want some company, or, or maybe we're going to buy a squeegee and, and ladder, and I don't have enough money to, to buy those things, but you guys, we do it 50 50, and so we'll, you know, we'll just kind of combine our resources and do it together. And we'll, be, we'll put our, make our name cards up and it has both of our names on it. And theoretically, I don't have to do anything else but just simply operate with more than one person to effectively be a partnership by default. Again, in terms of red tape, it's basically the same as a proprietorship. There really is no uh, significant legal red tape unless we're going to hire employees, which we can as a partnership. And we, again, we may need a business license from the local city and may have sales taxes if we're selling products subject to state sales tax. And so, so there may be some of that on the. Uh, but again, that isn't necessarily too However, I strongly recommend that if in fact you're going to get involved in a partnership, that you have a formal partnership agreement drawn up and executed and signed by all the partners. Now, this is not mandatory. You can have a partnership that's legally enforced on a handshake. But it is so much better to actually get down in writing exactly what the expectations are of the partners. What you plan to do in the business and who's putting up how much money and how you're going to split the profits. And if things don't work out, how would you buy me out or I buy you out or how would we terminate the business? And, and try and expect and anticipate all the things that could happen and uh, whether they be good or bad and, and, and then how those would be dealt with. And many times you have partners who don't pay attention to those kinds of things. And a few months into it, they, they regret it because now uh, you know, they made some money and, and one person's working harder than the other, at least they think so. And then there's disagreements on, uh, you know, on how the profits are to be split and all of a sudden there are significant problems. If you can anticipate these kinds of issues, it's very helpful. And so many times I recommend that even if you're starting a partnership and don't have any legal requirement for an agreement, that you have one done and may want to get an attorney who really knows the kinds of issues that need to be addressed up front. Of course, there are some software programs that give you some boilerplate forms of partnership agreements that might be useful in that process also. One of the things to note is, is in a partnership, as in a proprietorship, there is no separation of the business and the personal assets of the partners relative to legal liability. Again, let's assume that we're you know, doing the window washing, we're up there, and one of the partners is on one side of the building, the other is on the other, and again, one of them slips through the window, some damage, a lawsuit, and claims made that have to be fulfilled, and again, the squeegee and the ladder can be taken. But not only might the partner who actually caused the damage, their personal assets be attached and taken, but also the other partner. Wow, this is serious. We better get some liability insurance, or we may need to consider some other form of business ownership if, in fact, we want to avoid that kind of uh, personal liability for problems that may be associated with the business. Just as in a proprietorship, there is a, a separate legal, excuse me, there is no separate legal liability. There also is no separate income taxation of the business relative to the partners personally. In other words, from an income tax standpoint, the partnership will pay no tax. To the extent that there's any profit or losses, that will be allocated based on the percentage partnership interest to the individual partners to be reflected on their tax returns personally. The other uh, form of legal form of business operation, business ownership,
a corporate form of business greatly facilitates many owners and the easy transfer of ownership interests. So businesses that feel like they're going to have the need to raise capital and have many owners involved in that process, maybe even go public and get capital from the general public, will probably want to use some kind of a corporate form of doing business because it, uh, it really facilitates the process of bringing in those owners and allowing them to then sell their ownership interests before the dissolution of the business if they wish to. Again, the critical point relative to a corporation is its legal separate status, such that in the event that, uh, that my partner and I, again, in this particular case, he's not really a partner, he's a co-owner in a corporation, if in fact we form a corporation under which we'll operate our window washing business. In this particular case, again, the same scenario, uh, one, of the, one of the owners who's working there, you know, on the, goes through the window, damage inflicted, a lawsuit filed, and, and uh, claims made, and, and uh, well, what can be attached? In this particular case, under a corporate form, the personal assets of the owners are not subject to any attachment due to damage uh, inflicted relative to the, to the business operations. So any claims would be limited only to the squeegee and the ladder and the bucket. And, you know, I'm not at risk of, uh, of losing my, my house and my car and my family and these kinds of things. So you can see how this would be a very, very attractive way to set up the business ownership. Again, businesses that have valuable assets will probably want the business to buy business liability insurance so that the business assets aren't threatened in the event of damage and lawsuits. But it's probably not quite as significant, at least in terms of personal assets in this particular case, because there is protection. Here is the big downside relative to a corporation. Because a corporation is a separate legal entity, many... Uh, categories of our government have decided that, hey, it's a separate entity, it ought to be taxed separately. And the federal government has chosen uh, to tax corporations separately, and in fact, that creates a situation that I would refer to as double taxation. Who are the owners of business? The owners of business are those who invest capital in the business and therefore take the risk associated with that capital. The possibility that the business ideas may actually not come to fruition. Those who invest capital in a corporation as a legal form of doing business are referred to as the shareholders or stockholders. These shareholders or stockholders will elect a board of directors to represent their interests in the general business decisions. And many times the board of directors will do this um, uh, for a fee and, in fact, um, uh, may own shares of stock themselves, but they do not necessarily have to. It's the board of directors then acting on behalf of the shareholders who hires top management personnel who manage the business typically for a salary and, in many cases, for some options or opportunities to be compensated also in the form of stock potential ownership. Top management personnel hires other employees who work for a salary or wage and, in some cases, may actually participate in pension or profit sharing that also give them a vested interest in the future of business and its ultimate profitability because they may actually be allowed some kind of an ownership stake. As a result of the efforts of employees and managers, hopefully the company produces profits, which then go to the shareholders or owners as a return on their investment, justifying the original capitalization of the business. Ultimately, who are the shareholders of the business? Well, I think I mentioned this before, but again, who owns the shares or who owns the, the businesses? Who provides the capital for businesses in America? Well, it's you and me. It's your parents and grandparents. It's Americans. It's people. Now, you may say, well, but some of the biggest shareholders are other companies or institutions or pension plans or insurance companies or financial ones. Well, yes, but each of those are owned ultimately by shareholders. And finally, it's us. It's people. Sometimes we look at corporations and its businesses as some kind of an evil empire. And many times, uh, you know, we talk about taxing those businesses because, you know, they deserve to be taxed because they're, but let's face it, when in fact business is taxed, who is being taxed? It's you and me. And in fact, if, uh, if it's business that really uh, is, is uh, acting in the, you know, that we're going to accuse of not necessarily, you know, providing or making any contribution to society, remember, it's us. It's the people who are putting up the money to ultimately realize the benefits of ideas to provide goods or services to people. You see, business, in my opinion, I'm going to suggest, is truly inherently good. There was a time when I was kind of thinking about what, you know, what I really wanted to do with my life. And I thought, you know, it would be great to be a doctor because it would be great to actually be involved in something where you were being paid and probably paid pretty doggone well. But in addition to that, you were doing something that truly benefited the lives of others, maybe saving lives. Well, you know, I finally decided that I wasn't going to be a very good doctor because the side of blood was something that, you know, was a little difficult for me. But what about business? Is business really something that is honorable, that's appropriate? I would say yes. I mean, let's think about it. Everything that, the, you know, your carpets and your furniture, your chairs and uh, your telephones and technology and uh, all of these things are as a result of people with ideas gathering capital in order to provide goods and services that people want and are willing to pay for. And ultimately, if they're quality goods and services, hopefully they'll improve people's lives. Business is a great thing. It's worthy of our time and effort, if not participating in it directly, at least in terms of understanding it. So anyways, I'm glad to have you on uh, in this class. We're going to have a great ride learning about business, and hopefully you'll be able to learn some of these uh, uh, principles and uh, terminology and, and uh, that will be useful to you in your future life, whether you're going to be an investor or involved in management or not. Anyways, I look forward to seeing you in lesson two as we start our study of the general purpose financial statements.